Welcome again to the workshop of Wood Spun Round. This is Doug. It is good to have you with me as we work on this new project. This is a goblet, uh, or the start of a goblet. This is for hashtag goblet week. Uh, Steve Carvel, SK Crafts, has uh, started this uh, opportunity, I guess. Uh, every month, uh, usually the first Sunday of the month, he will name a, a project. Um, and we've got typically two weeks to to complete the project and send pictures in. Then he takes those all those pictures and puts them together in a slideshow, uh, and we'll show those not only on on his live, but also uh, we'll then produce that as a YouTube video, all, all separate. Um, he might even put those on Facebook. I don't remember for sure, but I know he does them on YouTube. But anyway, this is my entry. Um, I've talked about it. Maybe you saw my last video where I turned a uh, Bradford pear bowl, um, and I'm going to take it to the uh, folks who gave me the wood to begin with. This is out of that same tree. This is just a small limb. It's a, uh, roughly 12, 13 inches long here. I'm not going to end up with a goblet quite that long, but uh, uh, it is green. As you can see, that uh, roughing gouge is taking off a, a pretty nice slice there as we go along. That is a large roughing gouge. Uh, somebody mentioned, wow, that is huge. And it's, uh, I think it's two and a quarter is what it is. I bought that years ago with the intention uh, of doing something totally different. I was going to make a different tool out of it. Uh, but to, I, I just never did, and I've decided not too awfully long ago start using it as a roughing gouge, and uh, I, I'm really just now learning how to use it. It's it's a very nice tool, takes the uh, uh, abuse very very well, and I'm just going back and forth here. My tool rest isn't quite long enough to go end to end, so I have to do um, I'll do half or better. Uh, from one end and I move the tool rest and I do the other and so uh, what I was doing was just getting all the bark off getting it ready now I've gone to my semi square carbide tool the easy wood tool and I'm just uh, straightening that one end and I'm going to make a tenon on it on that end you can see there in the very top of the picture also the guard that is uh, an accessory that easy wood tools I know they used to sell it. I assume they still do, but I don't see too many people using it. Um, when you're using that tool real heavy, it will flat throw some shavings back in your face. And that that Lexan guard is just simply to keep the shavings from coming in your face. You can see there the shavings bouncing off of it. I've turned the, the blank around and put it in the chuck, and here I'm just squaring off the other end this will be the, the cup end of this goblet. Just checking to see if I've got it straight or not. I decided to go just a little deeper. I'm only cutting off about, oh, a sixteenth of an inch each of those two times. So I'm not taking very much off. All I want to do is square that end. This wood is still pretty green. And so as you saw with the uh, spindle roughing gouge, I, I'm going to get some good shavings here. Uh, not getting much in the way of shavings here because I'm not taking a very big cut. Very, very light. Okay. Here comes a half inch bowl gouge. Half inch bowl gouge is my my weapon of choice most of the time. If I don't, uh, unless there's a specific reason, chances are I'm gonna pull out a half inch bowl gouge before I pull out anything else. This one happens to be a sorby. I started from the very beginning with sorby. And I've got probably three of these half inch bowl gouges from sorby. They're all ground the same except for the I say that I've got four of them. I've got my original one that I have reground to more of a uh, the original uh, traditional grind, and I will use that for small bowls uh, going across the bottom. It's it's got that uh, real steep grind on it. 
And so that's what I use that one for. And so And it doesn't get pulled out very often. But I've got this one and two more that I use a, a fair amount. What I will usually do is sharpen all three of them at the same time. Uh, one gets dull, I go to the next one, and then I'll, I will, uh, um, sh you know, just move all the way down. When I've dulled them all, I will go and sharpen all three. I've moved here to a, a, a skew. This is my one-inch skew, uh, oval skew, and uh, I like this tool a lot. Um, but the skew and me and this wood did not get along real well together. You'll see here I'm getting real nice shavings. Uh, I'm liking what I'm getting here. I'm cutting this shoulder nice and straight. Uh, I'm getting it a little deeper. So I can go in deeper with the outside of the cup here. Because it's wet, it's... Uh, because the wood is wet, it is tending to stick to my tool just a little bit. Kind of digging down into that gully. I wanted it a little deeper. Blending that curve. You're about to see where the three of us don't get along together. That was a pretty nice cut there and getting a, a nice blend. You see the shavings coming over on my arm and um, they're nice and, and the surface is really nice as well. Still doing okay at this point. Switch over so I can get that top lip. Wanted a nice continual curve around there. Here's where I goof it up. It caught so bad, you saw there that we got it a little out of out of line. So I, I put it back in line and I went back to my half inch bowl gouge and got everything cleaned up the way I wanted it. Came on around and, and here we are working with the uh, bowl gouge to take out the center of this, this goblet. I am going straight into end grain and so the proper way to cut this is from center to outside. That way I stay with the grain. Sometimes on a piece like this, especially when it's really unsupported, um, it comes up, it works out better to go outside to in. Um, I don't know why that is. It just works out that way. If I had had a steady rest on here, uh, probably could have stayed with inside out and done just fine. Uh, but I believe it's because of the distance here out away from the headstock. That's why I was picking up some vibration. Also, as you can see, the bulk of this blank behind the cup there is is not round anymore. It's, it's out of round, and so I'm sure I'm picking up some vibration there as well. Here I'm doing some shear scrapes and, and cuts, whatever it takes to thin out those walls. Making sure I got the dust out so I'm feeling properly. I'm making sure the walls are parallel. I felt a lump in there, so I go back and, and clean it up. And I had to do that several times. Um, you can't see down into a hollow form that well. And so I just went back and forth. All right, I've completed the turning, and so now it's time to sand. I turned the speed down to... Uh, about 500 right in that neighborhood i was turning before close to a thousand rpms uh maybe even 1200 but i've slowed it back down to about 500 rpms starting to sand with uh, 80 grit and we'll work all the way up to 320 grit i'm going to do inside and out before i go on uh, to the stem 
You see there, I'm bringing up my vacuum. Uh, I've got the air cleaner on across from me and I had the vacuum on just to knock down some of the dust. We've already gone through the 320 and, and the uh, Axe Abrasive Paste. Didn't show you that one, um, should have, but uh, here we're gonna do some wax uh, on the inside, not on the outside, just on the inside. That will become apparent why here in just a moment, why we're not doing the wax on the ins or on the outside. But I did want the wax on the inside. It gives it just a nice finish, but it'll also protect uh, from the next step. Just buffing the wax, making it nice and smooth. Feels so good. But it's nice and uh, it's got a, a bit of a gloss too, not a, a high gloss, it's probably a semi gloss. I didn't really want a high, high sheen on the inside of this cup. Uh, uh, again, you'll see why here in just a few moments. Yep, it feels good. <laughs> All right, you see there the intrinsic colors. We're going to add a little color to this, to this goblet. Getting some ruby red stain into my air gun. Don't have to use an airbrush. I said air gun, it's an airbrush. Don't have to use an airbrush. It can, you can do this with a, a paper towel or even a cloth, either one. I just, uh, I have this handy and it works really well for me and that's just what I used. And this is not an expensive airbrush setup. In fact, uh, if I told you what it was, you'd you'd probably roll out of your chair laughing. Um, some of you might even guess from that. But anyway, it works. Uh, I do have a better brush. I've got a regulator and the tubing and everything. So I can hook this up to my big compressor uh, just this is handy and I've just chosen not to do that So I've got the red on I've started working on the stem um, I'm gonna work in in some stages here uh, Don't have to do it all at once But I do want to get the very top of this done um, So I can it, it gives me a gauge to go by You also see my tailstock has been pulled up. I've got uh, folded up paper towel inside of the cup uh, to keep uh, the end of the life center from poking another hole in there. Um, don't have to do that. I just, I don't want to have to work on that anymore. And I, I really don't like a hole in the bottom of my cup. And so uh, I put the paper towel in and that takes care of it. I've switched over here to my my Thompson detail gouge. Um, it's a, a great tool. It's a little smaller. Uh, it is a spindle gouge, but it's been sharpened with a swept back wing and uh, has a pretty sharp point on it. So I can get into some pretty small little areas with that. I'll, I'll kind of go back and forth because I'm putting a little don't know what it's called. Uh, uh, I guess it's a fillet, maybe. Um, anyway, it will have... Actually, it's a bird's beak is what it is. Um, because I go behind it and in you know, on both sides of it, it's pretty sharp. It stands kind of alone, uh, then sweeps down into the, the uh, stem. But it gives a, a place of definition between cup and stem. It doesn't just... So my line doesn't just simply flow from the cup right down in my stem. It, there's a break there. It gives the eye something uh, of interest to look at. Now here I decide, uh, since I've got that line between the stain and the unstained part of the cup, I put a, 
I, and I actually cut a line there, and I'm going to burn that. I'm reaching over here and getting my a piece of Formica, just a little sample from a cabinet shop. But I'll take that for Micah then and put it in, press it into that uh, line that I cut and right about, well, somewhere right here you see, well, maybe you don't see. There's a little puff of smoke and I knew that I had had it burned at that point, so I stopped. Bring the tail rest back up finish off what we were doing. I'm cleaning off a little bit of red bleed over there um, so that that burn line is, it makes it a nice crisp line across there. Just a little shear scrape is all I'm doing. Very, very light, wispy shavings coming off. All right, back to the bowl gouge. Let's have some fun. This is what I love about green wood. It just, those shavings come off in long ribbons and it's just fun. It's fun to watch them. Taking that beak down to, um, down to the stem, uh, trying to establish my final size. I've, I've worked a couple of inches there and, and uh, sanded that uh, to where you see it rise back up. Uh, but then I've gone behind that and I'm working down to uh, a working level. There go those ribbons again. I don't know, I may be the only one that gets super excited about that, but I, I just think that's cool to See those ribbons flying like that? See me varying the angle of the tool a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm getting ribbons in some parts and not in others. And I think some of that, it, this, this particular gouge is beginning to uh, dull out a bit. Still cutting awfully well but uh, it's not as sharp as it once was. Again, just another bird's beak, kind of not the middle of the stem. It'll be about a third of the way down. Uh, I don't know, visually, I just feel like it looks better if it's up above the uh, halfway mark uh, and if it, if you go by the rule of thirds uh, to me it just seems like it visually works better uh, may not for you but it does for me and uh, the the rule of thirds is is a rule for a reason it works and so uh, you know you don't have to live by that um, but it does work and it helps you from having some mistakes I've kind of decided where my foot is, and I'm kind of working down um, to that. I've got that beak at the top. I've got the beak in the middle. I'm going to have a beak at the bottom of the stem as well. Again, to break it from the, the uh, foot of the goblet. Using that detail tool to get the uh, bottom side of that beak cut down into the the, the base, and then I'm cutting the base in behind that beak as well. Doesn't have to be super deep, um, just has to be deep enough so that you get a visual break um, between there. Taking my time there, getting nice, smooth cut. Um, the smoother the cut is, the less sanding I have to worry about. Come back to the bowl gouge here. I'm going to do a little scraping action, a little shear scrape, or actually a shear cut, I guess. 
my handle is down fairly low. You see those shavings flying up and across my hand. See how fine they are. Just feeling, making sure I don't have any lumps or bumps that I need to go back and fix. I've probably already sanded that, uh, well, I'm sure I've already sanded that lower stem as well. Just using a, my parting tool, coming in uh, below the foot, getting a, my part started. I won't complete it just yet. But I want it started, I want, and I'm giving my space giving myself space so that when I do complete the part, I can uh, undercut that, that base just a little bit. Prefer that when the goblet is standing up on a table or a shelf, it's, it's actually being supported by the outer edge of that foot or uh, that base, not by the center. Um, if it's flat across there, as long as the surface sitting on is flat, everything's fine. But if it's not flat, that goblet will rock and roll uh, over that uh, irregularity in the in the surface so if you undercut that base just a little bit it will have a tendency to sit uh, much more steady probably going further along in this parting than I needed to but wanted to go ahead and, and get that much of it done uh, so that I could go through the finishing process and my finish would be partly under there as well. I did have to come back, come in and sand a little more. Even underneath that, that base a little bit, as far as I could reach. Couldn't reach in there real far. But I take care of that after it's all said and done, after it's parted off. Getting it all cleaned off good ready to go here comes my first layer the lacquer sanding sealer and this is the aerosol a little tough to find but uh, if you do your search and, and you uh, research it long enough um, I did not get this off of Amazon I got it for uh, it was nearly half of what Amazon was wanting uh, just getting a good base coat. Want to seal, seal the die, seal the wood. Give this a little time to uh, to dry. I denibbed it, came back, hit it again. This is the second coat. get some underneath again I left it spinning for a while and then let it dry then after about 16 coats of lacquer sanding them back and working on them you see the finished product here got a nice high gloss and a beautiful red well this is my submission to hashtag goblet week this is Doug at Wood Spun Round until we meet again hope you're able to spin them around